Hey guys, I just want to cover something really fast. Um, when using the art, the art paint tools on the uh, using a mask. Let me go ahead and just bring a picture. Not really a painting. Well, it's a it's a real painting. That's the funny thing. I painted that on four by eight board with uh, acrylics and spray paint. Anyway, one of the tools that we had here was the make vector contour or a mask. So we name it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just say uh, fish and hit OK, and it just puts the vector point there. I'm gonna scale it down quite a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and work it in really quickly. Uh, not perfect, just really for the illustration of the topic. What I'm doing now is just making a very quick uh, polygon or actually it's the, just the vector point it handles like a polygon so wherever we're gonna have the bend those two points can be pulled on the bezier straighten them out and I just wanted to show you how you can reuse this I'll paint with it and then we'll actually use it for another task in the compositor because it still exists. Well, I guess I'm getting behind, ahead of myself. Uh, that happens to me sometimes. Okay, so I don't want to close it yet. I'm going to use the this function to close it. But first, I'm going to go around and I'm going to shape this. What I like to do is shift select the two closest handles to to move it. and give it an arch. It's something I like. Um, I tried doing this in Illustrator and it's just very frustrating to not be able to do it. But Blender, you can. So, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a way to do it, but it's not as intuitive for me in Illustrator. I guess maybe I've got some bad habits there. But, I will say, I do really love the way curves are handled in Blender and I kinda wish some other softwares would handle them the same way but I'm not a real dev so I can't really do anything about it. All I can do is really hope that a lot of stuff happens with the Summer of Code that we get some uh, of those improvements they're working on that will make it a trunk. It's really cool and exciting stuff going on. Um, like I said we're not gonna get too crazy with this But all I'm doing here is selecting them and hitting G to grab. And then pulling them to get a bend. Okay, so I think we've got all the way around. We'll make our mask now. And to mesh mask is the, is the operator there. And I notice we've been getting the the unwrap is actually incorrect on these, so I'm just tabbing out to edit mode, U project from view, and gets it back in where it needs to be, back to texture paint, and then I'm going to maybe change the color a little bit. I'm gonna change it to color instead of mix, and then I'll paint inside the mask with the the color. So I change the color a little bit, and then no big deal. This is just for showing how the the operation works. Okay, so the mask actually exists as an object. You can kind of see. We're in orthographic mode here, so it's just, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, you know, it's kind of like, well, what are you going to do with it? But it's great for coming back and painting again and working with isolating your painting. But a really cool thing is that we can actually work it into, because I've brought it up in Z, we can work it up in 
as a uh, an ID, an object ID. So I'm going to come to the object panel, and where it says pass, I'm going to give it a pass of two, and I'm going to select my canvas and give that a pass of one, and then I'm going to go to the compositor, use nodes, backdrop. Output viewer, and I'm going to change this to viewer. And here I'm going to press render so it grabs everything, hit escape, and now what I want to do is set up the pass. We need to add an object index pass. And I think I need to re-render in order to get it to use to actually give me that pass. So now we have it here. So our converter ID mask. So we're going to pull this. I'm going to turn off backdrop for right now because we have the viewer node here. And I'm going to bring it in to where you can see. Here I'm going to change it to the two. I'm going to bring the index object to the ID value. Then I'm going to bring a blur to the. I'm going to run that alpha to the. the yeah, it's not being nice to me. Not right now. Color mix. So what we're going to do is add a color, you can actually recolor something. Um, what I'm going to do here is add like four pixels of blur and you'll see it here. We can also do stuff like instead of adding the color we can still mix it but we can use a copy of it so here we'll just bring it back to itself but we'll use a filter like uh, glare and turn the threshold down Well, it's not really showing us much. So let me go ahead and use a color mix node here. Set it to color. And you can see we can do some stuff. But mainly what I wanted to show you is this is something that you can do with your ID mask from reusing the object you've already created in this scene. So go to texture you can see here this this object here it's like that now if for some reason we wanted to really create something crazy I'm going to move then re-render and the viewer node shows you that you've got the original and then you got this copy over to the side so there's some really crazy stuff you can do. All right, I hope that was interesting enough. Uh, just a short one this week. I've got some uh, stuff going on that I'm going to try to take care of, and then we'll be back with some more uh, small lessons. I had planned maybe to cover some things that you normally see Photoshop tutorials out there for to show some interesting projects you can do with photographs where you're not actually having to paint, but you can use the add-on to manipulate. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Thanks.